Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well and welcome back to Whiskey Wanders. And I am back in SoCal today and I'm uh, really quite happy to be here because as much as I like Northern California, uh, I do. For me, and again, this is just my opinion, don't don't crucify me, but it just doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like the California that feels like home because it's just so different from uh, Southern California. So I am enjoying being back in LA and today I am doing some wandering at the Costco and Westlake, which is... Uh, a pretty bougie type area. It's not so ritzy like Marina Del Rey. Um, it's in the northern part of LA, so like in the valley. Uh, but it, it has lots of wealthy people who have jobs in these kind of big square, low-rise office buildings. And it's it's like a very suburban, gated community kind of area. Which makes sense because, uh, I mean, if you're going to go to a Costco, Costco is basically also a gated community of grocery stores. Now either way, because of the wealth in the area and the demographic, this Costco can have some actually pretty great whiskeys. Um, and it doesn't get so much foot traffic as some of the other stores do. So the good whiskeys uh, that do show up, they end up sticking around uh, a lot longer than other stores. And in this trip, actually I lucked out super big because they have some bottles of Blanton's that I was able to buy <laughs> at MSRP, basically. Uh, which to me is a unicorn occurrence, especially right now when the cost of bland is just skyrocketing at all the usual places, or if you can even find it at MSRP, it's probably already gone. So today we're going to look at the Blantons from this Costco in Westlake, as well as uh, the Jefferson Ocean, which has a pretty unique attribute to how it's made, as well as another bottle out of the Orphan Barrel collection, which is the Fable and Folly, which is uh, Orphan Barrel is a subsidiary of Diageo. We'll also look at the costs, compare the prices uh, of these whiskeys to the other big box stores, and talk about whether or not uh, they are worth buying. So, This is Whiskey Wanders is actually a pretty good one, so I'm pretty excited about it. I'm really excited about being able to find some Blantons. Uh, I guess I'm always excited anytime I find Blantons, especially when it's at MSRP. Now, before we get to it, though, I just want to say thank you to all of you who tune into these videos. I really do appreciate you watching, and it's pretty amazing uh, to see our little whiskey community continue to grow and see the comments and getting all your perspective on the way that whiskey is going writ large uh, around the country as well as around the world, for that matter. It's just so great to see. Also, uh, if you do like these videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps the algorithm, it helps the channel to grow, and it keeps the YouTube gods happy. All right, now uh, let's get down to business. So today, let's start off with the find that I am most excited about, which is this Blanton's. Now, Blanton's is probably one of the most well-known bourbons in the U.S., if not in the world. It's basically sold everywhere around the globe. So here in the U.S., it's sold in Europe. You can even find it in places like Japan. I mean, it's the point that even non-whiskey drinkers know about Blanton's. Now, they may not know how it tastes, they may not even know the difference between a bourbon and a scotch, but they will know Blanton's. And I think really it's probably because of the super distinctive bottle. Either way, Blanton's is known for its unique flavor, and because its taste can be so varied as each bottle comes from a single barrel, which means that there is no blending of different barrels together like with small batch bourbons, and that also means that there isn't the ability for the distiller to be able to maintain consistency in the same way as they would if they could put all the barrels together and change this and that to make the flavor stay almost like kind of flatline. Interestingly enough though, on each of the bottles of Blanton's, of course, there is a horse on the top. Of course, a horse. <laughs> There's also a letter uh, on the back hoof of the horse, and if you're able to click all the letters, you can spell out uh, Blanton's. Or, you know, if you want to anagram it, you could also make it uh, maybe non-blast, or my personal favorite, knob slant. <laughs> but as anyone knows who has tried to find uh, a bottle of Blanton's at a reasonable price, it can be a bit of a Herculean task, as it's part of the Buffalo Trace's allocated bourbons and only gets sent in super small numbers to various stores, who in many cases already have a waiting list for it. So it's basically oftentimes sold before it ever hits the floor. Now, purportedly, Costco doesn't do that. And I guess in this case, it doesn't seem like they did because I lucked out enough to find a bottle of blends at this Costco. Also, just as a heads up for whiskey hunters, just because there is not a bottle displayed at Costco, it doesn't mean it's not available. Sometimes they just only put up the little paper sign on the risers on the stacks. And if you aren't looking closely enough, you won't see it. I mean, in this case, Westlake, they had 16 bottles and uh, they just didn't put the bottles out. They just put the little placard up. And honestly, I would have not even seen it, uh, but luckily the wife uh, has a lot more attention to detail than I do. 
All right, so this plant that I found at Costco, Westlake, was limited to one per person, but it was priced at almost an unheard price of MSRP at $46.99 and 99 cents which is really quite good especially in comparison to what it costs at bevmo which has at 69 dollars and 99 cents or there's a local store here that has it in la for 54 dollars and 99 cents and you can find it at other places for 100 maybe 150 even 200 dollars uh, which is just highway robbery uh, but the 54 dollars and 99 cents is probably the second lowest price that i've ever seen it other than at costco for the 46.99 uh, but when it is at those prices it always goes real quick although i have noticed that blendens has really been popping up kind of all over the west coast recently in plenty uh so i'm not sure what's going on with that maybe it all just kind of went at once but uh you know if you're a quickie you might be able to find some um, but if you do end up finding it at Costco, you will be saving around $8 off the price of the local liquor store here in LA. Uh, and that comes out to about 14.55% in savings. Now, the ABV on this blend specifically is at 46.5%. But again, that changes from bottle to bottle because each of them comes from their own specific barrel. The tasting notes on this one mention things like moderate alcohol flavor, vanilla, caramel, cotton candy, and a bit of peppery rice spice, peanuts, and a creamed core. The overall reviews on it are reasonably good at 87.6 points, but you know it doesn't seem to justify the hype and the fervor and frankly the hoardiness that this whiskey uh, attracts uh, in the whiskey drinking public at, at large. For me, uh, it is <laughs> going to be a buy, especially at this price, because look, I'm not immune to the hype, uh, and it is good. I do like it. But it's so hard to get at a reasonable price that anytime I do see it, especially at Costco, uh, which at this point has only been twice, I at least pick up one bottle. Um, so this one is going to be a buy for me for sure. Now this next whiskey that I saw at this Costco Westlake has a pretty unique philosophy about how they age their whiskey, which seems sort of gimmicky. But it's also kind of sort of old school in the sense that it's how whiskey became the whiskey that we know today. This is the Jefferson Ocean, and their big claim to it is that they put the whiskey in barrels on a boat and then sail it around the seven seas. Uh, and what this does in theory is that it jostles the whiskey in a unique and varied way and kind of random way around on the barrel. So uh, they get more flavor put into it while they're on the ship. Uh, and it lists side from side all over the place for a long period of time. And then also the changing temperatures and the saltiness of the air inculcates the whiskey with a much better uh, unique flavor infusion also interestingly enough allegedly it does cross the equator at least four times before it's done aging uh, and this is sort of a cool idea because it's how whiskey started to really be aged uh, the way it is now at least from what i heard that they would distill it and put it in boats and sail it to other places obviously and in the process of these long extended sea journeys the whiskeys would start to take on the characteristics of the barrels and the sea and have a much more desirable flavor when it eventually made landfall at least that's the story but jefferson uh, doesn't distill its own whiskey at least not yet and the distillate is likely from uh, the high west distillers um, but of course we can't be sure because it's not listed so despite having it as an homage uh, to uh, what appears to be thomas jefferson it is a relatively new brand it doesn't have links all the way back uh, to the Jeffersonian era. Uh, it's sort of like the difference between uh, Jefferson Airplane and Jefferson Starship. And I'll let you decide which one is better. No? No references? 1970s band? Name changes? <sighs> Anyways, so this Jefferson Ocean is seen here at Costco at $69.99. So it's definitely not cheap, which makes sense because it's a whiskey that essentially has done a semester at sea program. <laughs> but it's not a, not a whiskey that a random person would just spend money on uh, especially at this price point. So I'm not exactly sure who it's really for. But Costco still has it at a reasonable good price in comparison to what you would find it at a place like Total Wine, which has it, well, actually at the same price at $69.99, or Bevmo, who has it at $79.99. So uh, that means if you do pick it up at Costco, or if you pick it up at Total Wine, for that matter, you won't actually get any savings because the prices are exactly the same. So there's no cash or percentage savings. The ABV on the Jefferson Ocean is at 45%, so it's right down the center for most bourbons. The tasting notes on it mention flavors like dark fruit, caramel, cinnamon, vanilla, oak, and sea salt, which was the kind of obvious. And the review scores on it are, are pretty decent, but disparate, in the sense that the, the people give it a lot of low 90 scores, but also a few people give it really high 70 scores. Um, so that comes out to an average around 87.67 points. 
So for me, uh, this one was a pass, but it's something that I'm really curious about. Something that I'd like to try uh, first and really see if the taste uh, difference is noticeable from its ocean voyage, I guess. But, um, you know, I want to see if it's all that it's all cracked up to be and try it out. And then if I like it, then I'll probably end up buying it, but I'll try it first. Now, this last whiskey for the day is one that I have seen previously. And in fact, I picked some up before, but I've not tried it yet, which is this Over and Barrel Fable and Folly. Um, it's out of the Over and Barrel collection, which is a subsidiary of Diageo. Uh, and they specialize in sa saving the remaining whiskeys from distilleries and whiskey companies that have gone bust and then mixing them together to make a unique concoction of whiskeys that is both rare and interesting. Uh, the Fable and Folly is yet another one of these whiskeys, and you know what? I think I remember I picked up another uh, Orphan Barrel whiskey, the Muckety Muck, which is a scotch from a, a distillery that uh, went bust as well. Um, and it's got a pig and it's got a kilt on it. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, but anyways, so this Fable and Folly, it is a bourbon, and the Fable and Folly is aged a minimum of 14 years. and is made from a mixture of bourbons from Barter House, Forged Oak, and Rhetoric Bourbon. It was blended by master blender Andrew Mackey, and each of these whiskeys have their own mass fills, which makes a the Fable and Folly have a really complex mixture of flavors and styles of whiskeys all in one single place. And on the bottle, you can actually see, <laughs> just kind of side note, you can see a creature that is an amalgam of a fox and a horse and a, a hummingbird, uh, which sort of vaguely references maybe like a Brothers Grimm style fable, maybe some Greek mythology and a bit of Americana with a jackalope style horns on the fox head. So I, I definitely like the design of the label, although it's a little obscure. Now being a special release, the cost on it is pretty high for what it is. Here at Costco, it's priced at $135.99, which is the same as it's priced at Total Wine, again, so they are both at the same cost, but they're both still lower than what they are costing at Bevmo, which is $169.99. Now, to be honest, I have seen this one uh, sit on the shelves at Total Wine for quite some time. It doesn't seem to move that fast. So whenever I see it uh, at you know, my local Total Wine, I come back, it's still there. That's just kind of something I noticed. And I don't know if that's um, because of the price or the flavor or it just kind of seems obscure. Again, I'm not sure about that. Now, again, if you do buy this one at Costco, you won't get much saving over Total Wine because they are the same cost. But the ABV on the Fable and Folly is at 45%. And the tasting notes mention flavors like wet oak, which is a great smell, by the way, uh, leather, green peppercorn, uh, slight vanilla, and a complexity that you would expect from a whiskey mixed with three very different bourbons. The review scores on the Fable and Folly have been a bit lackluster um, for what it is at 83.5 points out of 100. But again, I think that may be because of the price and the novelty of the whiskey. Uh, but those two things, price and novelty, don't always translate into great flavor. Uh, again, especially at the $135 price point, there's so many other bourbons and whiskeys that you could definitely get at $135 that you know are going to be good instead of taking this kind of chance on this <laughs> obscure whiskey. So I could see how maybe, you know, the reviews on it would be, you know, not so good. It's going to be more of an acquired taste. Now for this one, uh, for me, it was a bit of a buy. Not this specific time because I did buy it previously, but again, I'm a sucker for novelty. Uh, you know, it's just <laughs> like do things even if they're not great. Uh, so I didn't get to this trip, but I did end up picking up before, uh, but I have yet to try it. So it'll be interesting uh, to try to do a review on it and see, uh, you know, what I think. And, um, you know, it was a complete shot in the dark and I'm not sure I can recommend it to anybody. So I think it would be a pass in this case, but I did end up buying it. So it's more of a, a do as I say and not as I do kind of situation. All right, so that's it for today's Whiskey Wander at Costco and Westlake. And I want to say thank you to all of you who have made it this far in the video. I really appreciate you watching it this far. It helps out the channel and it, <laughs> it pleases the algorithm. And, you know, I like to think that it will bring the good fortune of the whiskey gods down upon you. So something to think about. Uh, all right, so with that, I just want to remind you all also that if you do find a whiskey that you love, just buy it. Because if you don't, somebody else surely will, and it might even be me. All right, so I hope you all have a great rest of your week. I'm out, and adios.